In landscape photography, light is everything. The South Island of New Zealand is the perfect playground for achieving creative and original photographs that really showcase the beauty around us. My name is Sam Dukaris. We're here today at the Blue Lakes at St. Bethan's with the aim of capturing a moment in time. Long exposure photography is a great way to add a unique perspective to your shot. Today we're going to show you how to combine this technique with time lapse. One of the most important aspects of landscape and time lapse photography is the location. It provides the backdrop and immediate foreground of your composition. In helping you choose this composition, I walked the 30 minute loop track around the lake to scope out possible shots and settled on this location here. By using mobile technology in the way of apps such as PhotoPills and Google Earth, you can figure out where the sun will be and this can assist you in planning the shoot. What I personally look for is a nice balance between the sun, the horizon and the landscape. It is important to have a clear vision with what you want to achieve as this impacts the overall shot and removes clutter and unwanted objects out of the image. I often plan in advance the particular shot I would like to achieve by arriving at the location an hour or two beforehand or even a previous day so that I'm not rushing when I get there. Today I'm shooting on my Nikon D810 which is considered to be one of the best landscape and astro cameras on the market. I'm also using a 24mm wide angle f1.4 prime lens. This is a great setup for wide angle long exposure photos as it provides the viewer with a sense of place and allows the photographer to play with light given the fast aperture lens. The Genie Mini will serve as my intervalometer and add motion to the time lapse sequence. To create long exposures, I will be using the Serap Variable ND filter screwed onto the front of my lens. This will provide me the flexibility to extend the shutter speed and will add a unique feel and look to the final time lapse. With my tripod and camera now set up, the first thing I do is set my composition and movement parameters. For the motion part, I am going to be panning clockwise. It is important that your frame is visually appealing and to achieve a nice balance the best way to start is by using the thirds rule. Dividing your shot up into vertical thirds, one third the sky and two thirds landscape or vice versa depending on your scene. In this particular shot I have chosen to divide it up to get a nice balance between the lake and the surroundings. Once my first frame is set and I'm happy with the composition it's important to make sure that the horizon is level. Although it's easier to fix later on, it's best to get it right out in the field. For setting the movement parameters, I will be using the Serap Genie app on my phone. I can set my start point directly on the app, and then just roughly guess how far I want to pan. Running a preview of the movement in the app allows me to check the exact speed of the movement, as well as the endpoint. Once the camera reaches the end, I can make tweaks to the endpoint to just get it right. Now I need to set the camera's exposure. Firstly, I will set the shutter speed and decide how long I want to leave the shutter open for to create the long exposure effect. This will vary depending on what you want the end result to look like. The conditions are already very still, and so I usually set this to around 2 seconds. I'm able to achieve the shutter speed by setting the ND filter to 8 stops. This will flatten the water out and make it even glassier than it already is, as well as capture some motion blur in the sky. I will set my white balance to a specific setting as I do not want it to change throughout the time lapse. And because I am shooting in RAW, this is easy to tweak in post production if I have to. In some scenes, I like to adjust the exposure settings throughout the time lapse to cater for changing light conditions. Today we have very consistent lighting, so I am confident that I can stick with the initial exposure settings. I've set the ISO to 125 and the aperture is set to f9. This will allow for a solid depth of field and acceptable sharpness on many wide angle lenses. As already mentioned, the shutter speed is set to 2 seconds. It's always good to double check everything and make sure your focus is set to manual. Now that I have my exposure and movement settings sorted, I can set the timing parameters in the app. When setting the interval timing, I need to make sure that each interval allows for an additional buffer to capture the image onto the card before moving to the next step. As a general rule, I usually add around 2-3 to three seconds to my shutter speed to allow enough time. In this case, I will select an interval of 5 seconds, 
An interval of 5 seconds also adds more movement into the clouds to the final time lapse as it's quite a still day. If I for example used an interval of 2.5 seconds then the movement of the clouds will be half as fast. I am after a playtime of 10 seconds so I will set my record time to 26 minutes. This is calculated off my interval of 5 seconds. Don't forget to make sure everything is fully charged and disable the autofocus settings as this can cause images to skip during the time lapse. I will also turn image review off to save battery life. With everything now set and my link cable attached, I can begin my time lapse. Now that you have completed the time lapse filming, it's time to put together the clip. I will be using Lightroom to edit the photos and then Premiere Pro to export the images as a 4K high definition movie. Once I have put the raw image files onto my laptop and imported them into Lightroom, I can begin the editing process. The key aspect to remember whilst editing single time lapse frames is consistency. I genuinely try to keep a natural look to my images. With the dynamic range of the Nikon D800 series, it is possible to adjust the tones and exposure of the image quite substantially without decreasing the quality. Because the lighting remained consistent throughout the sequence, I will be editing one central frame and then bulk applying the edits to the rest of the images. Head into the develop module. The first thing I like to do is to decrease the highlights and bring out the shadows. To do this, I darken the image a little bit increase the contrast and just use the sliders to decrease the highlights and bring out the shadows. Next I just bring out the exposure to my liking, decrease the contrast a bit. I'm quite satisfied with that. The next step I like to do is to neutralize the white balance. I'll go ahead and just hit auto and just see what that does to the photo. That's quite warm for my liking so I'm just going to use the slider here just to manually adjust that. I think just somewhere around that 6000 mark. The next thing I like to do is to crop the image. Because I would like the end clip to be in 4K, I know that the 16x9 crop is the appropriate preset. You can then manually drag the crop to suit your liking. About about there is fine. Because it was a pretty cloudy day with not much action going on, the image could look quite flat initially. Using the clarity slider can compensate for this. Just remember to be subtle with the clarity slider, as overuse can lead to a broken image with a lot of noise and haloing around the edges. I don't think this photo needs a lot of it, but I think around that 20 mark it will be just fine. Once you have finished the editing to your satisfaction, it's time to apply these settings to the entire sequence. On a Mac, it's Command A to select all. Go to Synchronize Settings, make sure all of the boxes are ticked, and hit Synchronize. So now once you have applied these settings, it's time to export the images into a folder as JPEGs. You can put the images into a, a subfolder with the title of your liking. The file sizes don't have to be too big, I normally go between 2.5 to 3.5 megabytes. Once everything is selected, hit export. This might take a few minutes. Ok so the images are now in a destination folder, and now we can put them into a motion clip using Premiere Pro. This is a pretty straightforward process. Open up Premiere Pro, make a new project and you can title anything you like. I've called this one St. Bathens. Then go to the File tab and scroll down to Import. Select the folder and the first image. Be sure that the image sequence box is ticked when doing this. The sequence will then appear on the screen. Drag this sequence into the timeline. Go to File and scroll down to Export. Export Media. Next, select the output format that you like. I have H.264 selected. I've also created a 4K preset that includes my preferred width and height, frame rate, 
level and bitrate settings. Be sure to tick use maximum render quality. You can change your output location by clicking the link here and changing accordingly. This also applies to the video name. Once you have completed these steps, your video will be ready for exporting. Simply click export and wait until it has completed its process and enjoy the end video.